Chronic inflammatory conditions are extremely common diseases, both in humans and essentially in the entire animal kingdom. And in both in autoimmune diseases and in pathogen-induced diseases, the inflamed areas are rapidly colonized by lymphocytes, and particularly by B-cells. Wherever you have the inflammation, the, the lymphoid cells invade the inflamed area and organize themselves in highly ordered structures, which are called the lymphoid follicles. And the scaffold, the skeleton of these lymphoid follicles is provided by a highly specialized cell type, which is called the follicular dendritic cell. So, in order to visualize um, the biology of follicular dendritic cells and to make you understand what goes on, my, um, uh, my little daughter Chiara, who is eight years old, and her friend Hayley have uh, prepared uh, some cookies uh, which are uh, meant uh, to represent uh, follicular dendritic cells uh, and uh, B lymphocytes, which are the happy guys with um, happy faces, uh, but also pathogens uh, like, for example, HIV and prions, which are the guys with with uh, uh, sad faces or with angry faces. Uh, now, the, um, uh, the thing with the follicular dendritic cells is the following. Uh, now, the guy with uh, all the little arms uh, is the follicular dendritic cells. These are the processes, the dendrites. Uh, and uh, what the follicular dendritic cell does uh, is that um, it traps uh, cells, uh, but also pathogens, uh, on its uh, surface. Uh, now, the problem is that follicular dendritic cells uh, arise ubiquitously wherever you have an inflammatory condition. So whether it is in the joint or in the lung, sooner or later you end up with follicular dendritic cells. So the question has been in the field for many years, where do these follicular dendritic cells come from? Because uh, the, the, essentially there are just two possibilities. Uh, because, uh, because they can arise everywhere, the most uh, likely possibility is that they would come from blood cells that are continuously circulating. But all the available evidence deposes in, uh, against uh, follicular dendritic cells uh, being bloodborne. So what uh, we are left with the second possibility that follicular dendritic cells may actually be stromal, sessile, immobile cells. But if that were the case, then they must derive from ubiquitous precursors because, as I said before, the follicular dendritic cells can arise everywhere in the body. So we tackle this question. The final experiment uh, the real, uh, that would really nail our hypothesis uh, consisted of taking pericytes, uh, purified pericytes, a cell fraction that doesn't contain anything but pericytes, uh, and um, showed that we can make them uh, differentiate into follicular dendritic cells. And this was done with the following experiment. What we did here was to take fat, abdominal fat, uh, from mice, and then we derived uh, a pure fraction of pericytes that is shown here, and then these pericytes, uh, were, first we made absolutely sure that there was no immune cell comprised in this fraction, and then the pericytes were incorporated into collagen sponges, and the sponges were transplanted into the kidney capsule of a recipient mouse, and this recipient mouse cannot make a follicular dendritic cells on its own. So, and then we asked, can we, if we give an inflammatory stimulus, can we actually produce follicular dendritic cells from this setup? And because if they come up, they must have derived from the pericytes, because the host cannot make FTCs. So this was done, and this was exactly what we found. Um, the, uh, and the blue stain indicates here the follicular dendritic cells, uh, which uh, trap immune complexes uh, surrounded by lymphocytes within uh, these uh, um, collagen sponges. And this was uh, a, a very strong evidence, uh, which, uh, in my opinion, settles the argument and indicates that uh, follicular dendritic cells are stromal and uh, follicular dendritic cells are derived from uh, these vascular mural cells.